Welcome to the Time to Fly podcast. It's time to give your business wings and take flight to achieve more impact, influence, and income with unique perspectives, tools, and tips from successful entrepreneurs and business professionals to help your business fly. Here to educate, encourage, and entertain you with their own unique perspectives and experience, plus sharing anecdotes of growing up as cowgirls. Here's your host, Nicole Homont. Hello, welcome to this episode of Time to Fly, Give Your Business Wings. I'm your host, Nicole Homont, here with Amber Henline of the Wellness Center. Amber is the executive director and founder of the Wellness Center, a nonprofit organization. Its mission is to connect our community, which is Cedar Rapids, Iowa, with alternative solutions for chronic pain and disease through preventative therapies to set up future generations for lifelong health. She has no background in the nonprofit startups and no experience in fundraising. This is a calling to do what needed to be done, so she learned how and she has done it. Her professional background is in law enforcement and that shifted to massage therapy three years ago. Amber started her own therapy business and started seeing broken pieces connected with our current healthcare system surrounding preventative care. Through the process of learning and growing the Wellness Center, she has spread her message and mission throughout the Cedar Rapids, Iowa community and beyond. She has gained a reputation for being a trusted voice in the community on this subject. She has been interviewed by KCRG as well as KWWL local radio, and numerous speaking opportunities regarding preventative health care practices. Her organization's programs have received several small grants, sponsors, and endorsements, including KCRG, Show You Care, and the Healthiest State Initiative. Now, I did have the honor of knowing Amber before she started the Wellness Center. She actually worked on me for about a year following a car wreck. Let me tell you, she's an excellent massage therapist. So if you do make it to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, make sure you get booked. Probably have to do it a few weeks in advance because she definitely keeps her books full. And she has put in a lot of time and effort into getting the wellness center going and has done some amazing things in the short amount of time that she has this going. And she has a great board to help support her now with it too. But when she started out, it was Amber who did a lot of the groundwork and put in a lot of time and effort to get this done. Now, Amber, besides being a massage therapist, besides starting this nonprofit, you're a mom and a wife. What app or resource do you find yourself relying on over and over again for productivity and or to create balance in your life? Well, I am a list person. So I have to make lists for absolutely everything. Lists for what I'm doing for the day, lists for what clients I'm seeing that day, what meetings I'm having that day. And so that adds up to a lot of lists. And if I were to write those all on paper, they would get lost and I would not know what I'm doing for the day. So I use Google Keep on my iPhone and that is just a an app that you can open and you can create hundreds of different lists. You can check things off as you do them. You can add pictures, you can write out your lists, whatever it is that you need to do to keep track of your life. That's a huge one. I open, I open that thing probably a hundred times a day just to keep myself on track. So you use Google Keep to have multiple lists, everything from the nonprofit to massage, to everything else you do. Um, Your kids are very active and your husband is a lot too. So are they on your list? They are on my list. Usually it's under the topic of ask husband what's going on for the day because he's available to pick them up and take them to practices and to games if I'm busy or if I'm at work and his schedule is a little more open than mine. So Eric is your husband and then you have two children. Do you want to fill us in a little bit more about your family? Sure, yeah, because they're awesome. Um, I have a 14-year-old son. His name is Reed. He's really into sports, so football and baseball are his main loves. And then my daughter, Rayada, is nine, and her love is gymnastics. She is a person who will not stop moving, so we found that gymnastics is perfect outlet for her. And I know both of your kids not only enjoy this, but they're actually both really good at their chosen sports. So very practice hard. They put in a lot of extra time to make sure they're getting in the practices that they need. Even outside of their normal practices, my son's always at the, the hitting cages or going to camps. And my daughter goes to camps for gymnastics outside of her normal routine. And it's just because they love it. It's not anything that I force them to do. They just 
they want to do these sports all the time. So I'm like, great, do it. I know you are big into fitness and staying healthy. How does that work with your guys' schedules? Well, it takes a little compromising. We do get up early to go to the gym. So me and my husband, when he's able to, we wake up at 4.45, we get to the gym about 5.15, um, get back home, get the kids up, get them ready to go to school, and we fit it in before we do anything else. Because if we were to do it later in the day, we would be way too tired <laughs> to add in. And then, of course, you know, we try to plan out our meals as best we can and, and know what we're up against for the day and what we need to prepare for everyone to eat healthy. So your two biggest tips on that are probably gym first thing in the morning and make sure you plan your meals out. Definitely. Those, those are huge. Now we're going to go a little bit more back into your background and kind of tell people more about how this journey evolved. But can we start with when you were 10 years old, what did you imagine your life being like as an adult? Do you remember that? Well, I've always wanted to help people. And for a long time, I thought I wanted to help people with their animals and be a veterinarian. But I quickly found out that uh, that wasn't going to be for me. But it's just always been in the back of my mind to help people. I didn't always know what that would look like. So, you know, one of the first things I did out of college was become a law enforcement officer. And I thought that was going to be the right path for helping people. Uh, the problem is people don't always want your help when you're a police officer. So, you know, people did look forward just to having you around them. And, and for me, that didn't work out. You know, helping people now with massage and our nonprofit and people are actually happy to see you. And that makes my life a whole lot happier. Well, that is awesome that you do get to help people. And that's something you've been passionate about for so long. So right now we are going to take a quick sponsor break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the nonprofit 501c3, the Wellness Center, and figure out why you started this, what the catalyst was behind it, what your plans are for the future, and how people can help, whether they live in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, or elsewhere. This episode is sponsored by Standout Pro, teaching you how to stand out and get more clients using LinkedIn. Get your free gift at standoutpro.com. We are back here today with Amber Henline of Performance Therapeutics. Today, what we're talking about, though, is the Wellness Center. It is a 501c3 nonprofit that Amber founded Amber, can you take us back to why you decided to start this and how it came about? Well, I started my massage therapy career about three years ago when I went back to school. And one of the instructors there said something so profound that I, I really took it to heart. She said, how much better off would the world be if everybody got to look forward to having a massage once a month? Now, I know everybody doesn't like massage, but that made a whole lot of sense to me. Something to look forward to that helped you stay healthier. And so I kind of took that to heart and was thinking outside the massage realm into all the different things that people can do to be healthy. And me and a few other colleagues of mine were kind of batting around the same idea of, you know, if we could help people with preventative care, whether that be massage, chiropractic care, acupuncture, their nutrition, you know, mental health counseling, decreasing stress, increasing the good things in their life. If we could help people with that, because a lot of times it's cost prohibitive to people or their insurance doesn't cover these types of therapies, how much better off would the world be? And then of course, you know, you start diving into research and uh, trying to figure out how you're going to make that happen. And I just was blown away by the declining health of not just my community here in Cedar Rapids, but across the state of Iowa and even across the nation, that seven of every 10 people uh, die from a chronic disease each year. And that's an astronomical number. And, uh, you know, things that can be prevented, not all chronic diseases can be prevented, but the ones that can be prevented, they're not being addressed. So that was the catalyst, not just, hey, let's help people feel better, but there is a real need to help people take better care of themselves. Can you tell some of our listeners what these preventable diseases are that you're finding to help people with? Oh, yes. Uh, 
we, the big ones have a lot to do with the heart and circulatory system. So heart disease, stroke, type two diabetes, and even some cancers we're seeing as, as the chronic diseases that people are coming up with. And a lot of things lead into that, you know, obesity, lack of nutrition information, lack of good foods, just lack of knowledge on the things people need to do to take care of themselves on a daily basis, because it's the things we do daily that really add up to how our body is going to respond in the long term. Because a lot of these diseases people don't get in their early years, except for the obesity part and diabetes, it's something that creeps up uh, with bad habits over time. So what is the Wellness Center doing to help educate people? Well, we have four different programs that we're running right now. The biggest educational part is our wellness talks. They're called Well Talks. Uh, it's an acronym for Wellness Education, Lifestyle, and Leadership, and it's kind of a spinoff of a TED Talk. And we have an expert speaker that comes in once a month to our local downtown library, and they give uh, their take on their specific topic towards uh, wellness. So that can be anything from uh, how to eat better foods, how to kick the sugar habit, uh, things to deal with mental health, and how to keep your mental health in check, things to do with stress. We have had topics on finances and budgets, and all of these things that tie into how are we going to live the best possible life, and, and how do we incorporate these things and tools in, into our daily activities. So that's our main program that has to do with education. Uh, we have a few other programs that incorporate education, too. We have our pain management clinic, and this is held at our local public health building. And it's an eight-week clinic where people come in who have chronic pain issues, and they learn all sorts of different tools and techniques, as well as thought processes, to help them understand the difference between pain and suffering, chronic and acute pain, and it gives them tools that they can use in their daily life to not take their pain away because their pain is chronic and always be there, but ways that they can control how they're experiencing their pain. And a lot of that has to do with uh, how we think about pain because pain is an output of the brain. And, you know, if we can control that output and what the brain is telling us we're feeling, then we can better, better control that. So we have a huge educational component to how to manage pain, as well as how to incorporate things into your daily life to deal with other parts of the wellness wheel. Could you give us a few tips on how to manage, let's say, neck and shoulder pain? Sure. Well, so you have the few obvious ones. One, you want to, if it's a chronic issue, you would definitely want to speak to your doctor about it. Uh, the problem is a lot of doctors, they have to know a lot of things. And their main pool uh, wraps around medicine. So a lot of times they're going to say, you know, take ibuprofen, drink lots of water, do some stretching. Um, they're not necessarily going to give you those extra things you can do. So then comes in more alternative types of therapies. And those can be anything from uh, seeing a chiropractor or visiting a physical therapist I'm going to get a massage from a massage therapist who knows how to treat that specific ailment. Uh, there's acupuncture. And of course, if it's something chronic, and you've been dealing with it for a long time, you're going to want to wrap around these resources and maybe do uh, all three or all four along with the things that your doctor is having you do. And then, of course, if nothing gets better, you're going to have to have a more in-depth conversation with your doctor about, okay, is there something actually wrong inside that needs to have a closer look? Because it could possibly be something that a surgery might be able to help. But, you know, taking the time to research all of the different avenues that you can do, you know, maybe your posture at work or something you're doing repeatedly is causing a muscle imbalance. And so looking at the things you do on a daily basis, you know, maybe you're a cashier and you always move the items from one side of your body to the other, and you're not doing it the other way because the cash registers don't go the other way. You know, looking at the things, the repetitive movements you're doing a lot and trying to address those issues, because if you don't address the things you're doing on a daily basis, you know, a massage or acupuncture or, you know, taking ibuprofen, 
will help for a little bit, but those problems are just going to creep back up and become a huge pain in the neck for you. So definitely thinking about, you know, am I looking down at my computer all day long or am I looking down at my phone all day long? And what does my body have to do to compensate for that? Am I causing a problem just by doing that one little thing? So just looking at your pain from a broader perspective, because pain is not normal. You know, pain in your neck or in your back or in your arm, it's your body telling you that something needs to be addressed and that you need to either change something you're doing or you need to get help for the issue. Now, you have said um, that these types of treatments can be cost prohibitive and insurance doesn't cover a lot of it. So what is the Wellness Center doing to help alleviate that cost? Yeah, well, because we are a nonprofit, we have the luxury of being able to accept donations or apply for grants. And, you know, that money we put into our budget for a few of our different programs. One of the programs I haven't talked a lot about yet is our collaborative care program. And this is where, you know, we work with individuals who their income is limited. You know, their insurance might not cover some of the therapies that they need. I know a lot of things don't cover massage. They don't cover acupuncture. Uh, it won't cover, you know, nutrition, meeting with a nutritionist, and maybe you need to lose weight. So it's not helping you. Your insurance isn't helping you in that regard. So our collaborative care program is where we sit down with individuals and we say, hey, you know, what is the problem? Why did you come seek us out? And we talk about all the different therapies that they might be able to incorporate. and then from our pool and our budget, we can help them with the cost. So if they're very low income and, you know, maybe they're living off of local SNAP program or they have free health insurance, then they might be able to get all their services for free. You know, they might be able to see an acupuncturist or get a massage or get adjusted or go talk to a nutritionist and it won't cost them anything. And the wellness center will pay that bill for them. Or, you know, if they're not quite that low income, then maybe we just end up paying half. And and that all kind of fits into a personal budget with these people that we sit down and we talk about what they have going on in their personal lives. And so we like to be able to work around that. We don't want to tell people, oh, you know, no, we, um, we can't help you get better because, you know, you're, you're making too much. So we try to work with people that, hey, if it doesn't, if you don't fit into our income guidelines, you know, we do have providers that are working with us that will discount their prices. And then we can hook you up with them uh, on a different avenue. It might not be something that we pay for, but we can definitely try to find people resources that can help them and not just, you know, shove them out the door and say, you don't qualify. Like we still want to be able to help people when they ask for it. That sounds like an awesome opportunity for people in Cedar Rapids to get these preventative health cares. Now, if people are interested in what you do and think that they could help their community, where can they go for more information and is there a model that they can follow? Yeah, you know, we do have a website. Uh, it is uh, cr-wellness.org. Uh, there's lots of information on there, especially our contact information, because sometimes it's just better to call us or send us an email to inquire. We do have Facebook and Instagram, and that would be at B-E-W-E-L-L-C-R. And we post a lot of our events and a lot of the things that we're doing in the community. We share a lot of articles on, on Facebook. And so you can definitely follow us there and kind of find out more about what we're doing, where we're at, and you know get some helpful tips and tricks along the way. And I know when you first started this, it was you for quite a while. And now mm -hmm. you have put together a board that is helping you with all of these decisions. Can you talk about the board a little bit and share with us sure. what they're doing? Yeah, well, when you start a nonprofit, you know, usually it's one or, or a few people that started. And in my case, it was one. And I had to quickly figure out who was going to help me with this. And it has been a year and about four months, and we have gotten to the point where we have nine active board members from all different parts of the community. You know, we have people in financial arena, we have people in real estate, we have a board member uh, that's part of a mental health group, and 
everybody brings in their own unique set of skills, which I think is great because, I mean, I have all of my ideas about where I want this to go. But, you know, when you have a team, now you've got nine more people that can put their heads together and make this so much better and impact so many more people than I ever would have imagined we would have been able to do. So, yeah, our board development has been quite the process, but uh, we're at a really great place right now with a lot of great people who really have a passion for seeing the health increase in our community. Well, that is so great to have those people joining forces with you to help make Cedar Rapids a better community. And like you said, hopefully it trickles out into the entire state and possibly across the entire United States as you guys show what can be done when you're determined. Now, as we're going to kind of switch gears here, we're getting close to wrapping up this episode. Um, We have a few more questions for you, Amber. And this is just some fun stuff to kind of get to know you a little bit more and let our listeners have a few more tips on different things. Where do you turn to stay up to date in your field? Oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I have a great network through our local uh, foundation. It's called the Greater Cedar Rapids Community Foundation. And they keep us up to date on different continuing education classes that are geared specifically for nonprofits. They have peer groups. There's a lot of these foundations throughout the nation. If you're looking for keeping up to date in the nonprofit sector, I would definitely check out your local foundation. Another resource that I utilize are podcasts, you know, great podcasts like yours, where you can hear from other people that are in the same arena you're in. So for uh, the nonprofit world or even for entrepreneurs in general, I like the successful nonprofit podcast. And then uh, the other one other podcast I listen to, I don't think it's currently making new episodes, but it's got great episodes in its library is the One Simple Thing podcast. And those are always great to listen to. I would highly recommend checking out podcasts online. And usually they give you recommendations on different ones to try too. And just checking them out and seeing, you know, is this something I like listening to? Is it giving me useful information? Keep up to date on everything. Well, very good. So people can look in their own communities and see if there's a local resource. And of course, the podcasts keep everybody connected too. So if you could go back in time, what advice would you give to your younger self? And when would you do this? Well, probably right away, as soon as I could think of it, um, I would probably tell myself to trust your instincts. There's been a lot of times throughout my life and all the different careers that I've been in. And I was, you know, thinking to myself, you know, this, this, I'm not enjoying this. I'm not really seeing this fit into my life very well, or I'm really having to juggle and switch my, my personal life around to fit this job in. So you trusting how you're feeling and your instincts and what your mind and your body is telling you is right and going with that. I mean, a lot of times it's scary because if you're in a career or a job that you just absolutely hate, it's very scary to think about doing something else and starting all over again. But, you know, the majority of your life is spent doing these things and having these careers and jobs. And if you're not happy, now you're just, you're wasting many, many hours of your day with something you don't like. And, And that's not necessarily worth it. So I would say, to trust your instincts and, you know, make the change sooner rather than later. Oh, very good advice. It's always good to be in tune with yourself and listen that we have all those instincts for a reason. So as we wrap up the podcast, if people are wanting to donate or learn more about the wellness center, they can go to the website, cr-wellness.org. I'll make sure to include that link in our show notes so people can get there. And we thank you very much, Amber, for being on this episode of the Time to Fly podcast. So everyone, be sure to join us for our next show of Time to Fly, Give Your Business Wings. And you can find us at our website at timetoflypodcast.com. A big thank you to this episode's sponsor, Standout Pro. Be sure to get your free gift at standoutpro.com. Join our flock. Stay informed of all things Time to Fly by subscribing to our newsletter at timetoflypodcast.com. And be sure to tune in to our next show.